Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will look at how we can install and configure Active Directory on Windows Server 2022. So let us begin. Okay, so once we log into our Windows Server 2022, usually what happens, the server will automatically launch the Windows Server Manager window. And from there, you can proceed with your configuration and your day-to-day -day activities of managing your Windows Server 2022. In case you do not have the Server Manager to automatically start when you log into your computer, what you can do to get it running, you can just click on Start, and then you just come to the menu and click on Server Manager. As you can see, or you could just simply search for it and say server manager and then it shows up so you just click on the server manager app and you get a server manager to open so i'm just going to click on the x to close this little wizard so from this dashboard on your very left you have the dashboard which is where we are right now and then you have local server you have all servers and you have file and storage services so currently we only have one server. So when we click on all server, we are just going to see the name of our server listed on our servers. As we configure subsequent servers and continue to expand our network, all of those servers will be listed in this section. And then when we click on local server, local server is simply the particular server that we are currently logged on to. So, which is our domain controller 01. If you don't know how we install Windows Server 2022 and then how we perform post installation configuration, you can make sure to check in the video description. I will leave a link to the full playlist of previous videos. And also in the YouTube card, I will put a link to how you can install Windows Server 2022 and then also how you can perform post installation configuration. So we're just going to take off from where we left off in our previous video, which was about the post installation configuration of Windows Server 2022. So we're just taking off from there. In order to configure Active Directory on our Windows Server 2022, the first thing we need to do is to install the Active Directory Domain Services or ADDS for short. To do that, we will click on Manage at the top right hand side of the Windows Server Manager window. So we click here on Manage and then we come to Add Roles and Features. So we click that option and then the Roles and Feature Wizard pops up. And then the first area is just telling you about this wizard. So we just click on Next. And what we want to install the Active Directory Domain Services is our role-based or feature-based installation. So we'll just keep it to that first option and click on Next. Like I said, because we currently have one server on our network, so the name of the server is listed here and it's selected by default because that's the only server, right? So we'll just keep it selected and we'll just click on Next because that's the server we're going to install our Active Directory Domain Services on. So when we look at the list of the various roles that we can install on the server, we will just install the second option, which is Active Directory Domain Services. So we just click the little checkbox to have that selected. And once that is selected, it automatically selects additional tools that the Active Directory Domain Services will require in order to function properly. And then we'll also include the management tools as well. So we'll just keep those active by default. And then we just click on add features. Once that is done, the next thing we want to do is to install DNS server. So we will just click on install DNS server. And then again, it will automatically select the tools that are needed for the proper functionality of the DNS server. So we'll leave those active. We'll click on Next. And then at this feature screen, you will have features that are automatically added based on the roles that we 
are installing. So since we are installing Active Directory Domain Services, it's automatically going to add the Google Policy Management feature, and then it will add other features as well. So those are already selected by default. So we'll just leave those and we'll click on Next. So on this screen, it's just telling us about the Active Directory Domain Services. And then at the bottom, it tells us about Azure Active Directory. So Azure Active Directory has been renamed to Antra ID. And basically, Antra ID or Azure Active Directory is Microsoft Cloud-based identity and access management services. So with Antra ID, if your company wants to migrate to Azure Active Directory, they can use the Azure Active Directory Connect or Antra ID Connect, as it is now called, to migrate users and computers and groups from your on-prem Active Directory domain services to your Antra ID. So it's just giving you some little bit of information that you can read about. But for now, we just installing Active Directory domain services. So we will just click on this. And then also here, because we selected the option to add the DNS server role on this server. So it's just giving us some information about DNS. In subsequent videos, we will go into more details about DNS. So for now, we'll just click on this. And then this will just give us a summary of all of the roles and features that will be installed. So if we want to export this configuration, we can always click on export configuration settings and we can save it. So I will just click on cancel and I will just click on install. And then it's going to install the Active Directory and Domain Services and DNS server role on the server. Once these roles and features are done installing, the next thing we're going to do is to promote the server so that it becomes an Active Directory server or a domain controller. So I'm just going to pause the video and allow this, these features and roles to install. And then once that is done, I will come back and then we can promote the server so that it can become an Active Directory server or domain controller. All right, so the features and roles have successfully installed. As you can see, configuration required, installation succeeded on SVR 2022-DC01. So now that that has been installed successfully to promote this server so that it can become a domain controller, we can just click right here, promote this server to a domain controller. So that's one way we could do it. So let's suppose that we didn't notice that and we accidentally click on close to close this wizard. If that wizard is closed, when you look at the notification area, you will see a notification right here. So when you click on it, it still shows you the option here to promote this server so that it becomes a domain controller. So we can also come right here and just click on promote this server to a domain controller. So I will click on that. And then the Active Directory Domain Services Configuration Wizard will open. Since this is our very first domain controller, we are not adding a domain controller to an existing domain because we don't have a domain yet. So we cannot use this first option. And then the second option is where we want to add a new domain to an existing forest. Currently, we do not have an existing forest. So we're going to create a new forest. So we'll take the third option, which is add a new forest. And then we need to put in our root domain name. So usually it will be your company domain name. For us, it will be callluisacademy.com. And then we'll click on Next. So it's going to check and make sure that this domain name doesn't exist on our network. So we'll just give it some time and allow it to do the check. And then we can continue on with the configuration. After doing the check, it finds out that that domain name doesn't exist on our network. So we are taken to the next screen for us to set up our domain controller options. On the next screen, we have the domain controller options. So at the very top, we have forest functional level and we have domain functional level. By default for Windows Server 2022, our domain functional level and our 
forest functional level are both set to Windows Server 2016. If we keep these two functional levels to Windows Server 2016, it means that any domain controller that we want to add to this network has to at least have Windows Server 2016. So for example, if we work in an environment that has an existing domain controller, let's say probably Windows Server 2012, we will want to change this to at least Windows Server 2012 so that we can come to the, the domain functional level and then be able to select Windows Server 2012. Because if the domain functional level is not set to Windows Server 2012, it means that an existing Windows Server 2012 cannot be a part of this domain. In our case, this is just the only server we have, and we're just going to be using all Windows Server 2022. So we can keep these to the default 2016. You may need to change this based on your existing environment. So if you have, for example, an existing Windows Server 2008, then you want to change the forest functional level to Windows Server 2008 so that you can change the domain functional level to 2008. This is the only way that a 2008 can become a part of this domain. So that is important and you can just keep that in mind. So I'm just going to switch it back to 2016. Next, we come to specify our domain controller capabilities. Because this is the very first domain controller in our forest, the DNS role will be selected by default as well as the global catalog. So the global catalog means that this server will have information about the entire Active Directory domain. So when there are additional servers that come on the network, this domain controller will replicate the global catalog, which is a database of all the objects on our network will be replicated to those additional domain controllers. So these are selected by default, so we'll just keep those. And for now, since this is the primary domain controller, we cannot set it up as a read-only domain controller. So that option is gray out. Then we come down to the directory services restore mode. So we need to set up a password for our directory services restore mode. So what this is for is when there is a problem with your Active Directory, you will need this password in order to perform some maintenance functionality on your Active Directory. We will set up this password. And usually this password for security reason, I recommend that it is different from the administrator password to log in to your domain controller. So I've set up my restore password and I will just click on next. And the next screen is asking to create a DNS dedication. We don't want to do that for now. So we will just click on next. And that is going to check the network again to see if there is a server or another device on the network that has this name. And if it doesn't have this name, it's going to populate the net BIOS name. And the net BIOS name is limited to 15 characters. So that's why you have it stop at the DEM instead of the other Y. Then we click on next. So the next screen tells us where the Active Directory database will be stored on the computer. So it will be stored in the Windows folder and then in the subfolder called NTDS. And then the log files as well will be saved in that same location. The SysVolf will be saved in SysVolf. So these are the default locations. You are free to change it to another location, but we'll just keep them to the default and we'll click on next. And this screen gives us a review of everything that we have done so far. And again, we can view the script to see the services that we selected and we can save this and we can use PowerShell to deploy an additional domain controller with this. But I'm just going to click close and I will click on next. So it's going to check and make sure that all of the prerequisites are met before it can promote this server to become a domain controller. So I'm just going to give it some time to do that and I will continue after. All right, so as we can see at the very top, it says that all prerequisite checks passed successfully. Click on install 
to begin the installation. So I'm just going to click on install to begin the installation. So now, as you can see, it is starting to install and promote this computer to become our first domain controller. So I'm going to pause the video, allow that to install. And once that is done, I will resume the video. So once the installation is done, it tells you that your computer is being restarted. So I will just click on close and I will click on close and then the computer will automatically restart. All right, now that my computer has restarted, to put in my password, usually for Windows, you have to press Control, Alt, and Delete. Because I'm using a virtual environment, if you press Control, Alt, and Delete, it's going to trigger the lock on for your host computer. So instead of pressing Control, Alt, Delete, you want to press Control, Alt, and Insert instead. So when you press Control, Alt, Insert, then it's going to open the password for your virtual computer. Or you can just come at the top and you come to VM and then you click on send control or delete. When you do this, it will also do the same thing, but make sure to use control or insert instead of control or delete. So I'm just going to put in my password and log into my server. So once I'm logged into the server, I'm just going to click on X to close this and then I will click on local server. So as you can see, now when we look at domain, we have our domain name is here now. And then you will notice that when you click on tools, we now have Active Directory Administrative Center. We have Active Directory Domain and Trust. We have Active Directory Module for Windows PowerShell. We have Active Directory Sites and Services. We have Active Directory Users and Computers. We also have DNS. Before, these things were not available on our tools, but because we have installed these services on our Windows Server 2022, we now have these various tools. As a Windows administrator, most of your day-to-day -day tasks will be done in the Active Directory users and computers. So I'm just going to click that to open it. This is our Windows Active Directory user and computer. When you look on your left, we can see the name of our domain. And then when we click the little arrow at the left, it expands the structure of our domain. We see built-in and we have computers, we have domain controllers, and we have all of these folders. So when you click on domain controller is going to show you the name of our domain controller and it tells us that this domain controller has the global catalog additional domain controllers that will be added to this network they will all show up on our domain controllers and then we have the default user so our administrator user which was a local user has been moved into our active directory so in subsequent video we will talk more about users and groups how to create users, how to create groups, how to add users to group, how to add groups to group where we have nested group and how to delete those group, how to modify groups and modify users. But this is just a quick overview of where you will be spending most of your day-to-day -day tasks as an administrator for Windows Server. So I'm just going to close this and yeah, so that's how we will install Windows Active Directory Domain Services on our Windows Server. 2022 and then we promoted it to become a domain controller all right so this brings us to an end of today's episode i hope you found this video useful and if you like this video make sure to leave us a like if you have any feedback for us make sure to leave those in the comment section below and also if you haven't subscribed to the channel make sure to subscribe to our channel because that's how you support the channel and that's how you get the algorithm to push our content out there so that other people on the World Wide Web can take advantage of the free resources we are providing here and learn something new. And also, kind of do us a favor, make sure to share this video with someone that you think will find it useful. But without further ado, I will leave now and I will see you in the next video. Take care and bye.